Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from my home. I've been home for about a week. I've been filming a lot over in Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. A lot of people ask me, you know, when I'm filming videos over there, they're like, oh, how long are you in the Gatlinburg area? How long are you in the Pigeon Forge area? Actually, when I, usually, about 100% of the time, when I'm in Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge, I just drive over there for the day. It's about, normally, it's about an hour and a half, um, with with 40 being uh, destroyed. I, um, I've been taking a different route going over there using the, um, using the, uh, National Park to get through, to get through, um, get Smoky Mountain National Park, cutting through there to get to Gatlinburg. It takes about an hour, 45 minutes to get to Gatlinburg, about two hours to get to Pigeon Forge, a little longer than it, uh, than it normally takes, but, uh, yeah, a lot of times when I am home, that's kind of my go-to, uh, you know, find things to do. I'll find things to uh, put into these videos. So I had a lot of fun over there. Had a little bit of rest, just a tiny bit of rest here at home. And um, yeah, yesterday I didn't upload a video. I had um, I had some doctor's appointments, some errands, some things, just things building up because I'm not home very often. And I had to get done that uh, that day. But right now we're packing up the car because we're going on a trip. We go on a lot of trips here. <laughs> Going to be heading down to uh, Central Florida for about two weeks, I think, is what what I've figured. Um, going down there for uh, for IAPA, which is the uh, theme park trade show uh, that they have once a year. One of my favorite events. That's going to be occurring um, next week. Going down there a little early um, because you know I always love going down to Orlando. I love going to the different uh, theme parks there. I just renewed my Disney annual pass. Got that renewed. It was um, about well, thirteen hundred dollars this year to get that uh, get that renewed. So I definitely definitely got to get my uh, get my usage out of that. So probably spending some time at Disney, maybe some of the other parks, maybe some Busch Gardens, maybe some Sea World, maybe some Universal. Um, you know, like, this is the time of year where they start doing their holiday stuff. So probably going to try to, uh, do some Christmas events at, uh, at the parks. Um, so yeah, I always looking for it. I love going down different times of the year to, to Florida and enjoying the different, uh, celebrations they have. And we're, we're going to have a good time at IAPA because we always have a good time at IAPA. But I figured um, a lot of times when I am traveling, I do take that day off. From filming, especially if I'm driving like nine hours like I am today. But I figured I'd take you guys along and just kind of show you my process, <clears throat> my in-between process of, you know, how I drive, how I travel. I do get a lot of questions about that, about about my traveling habits, about how I deal with long, time, long drives in the car, how I prepare myself. So I figured we'd take a look into my trunk. So this is the old carpet mobile. Here, this is what Jen drives um, now. I uh, bought this red car, which we dubbed uh, Rosebud um, earlier this year, and uh, so far it's, it's it's done me well. Not had any um, stupid breakdowns or anything like that. It's coming, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, and then back here is kind of my suitcase setup. This is my primary suitcase here. It's got the Swiss, Swiss flag on it. Um, this is, you know, my generally a lot of clothes in here. Um, pack it really tight. Um, pack a lot of extra stuff because I'm always afraid I'm going to run out of stuff. So this has got my shirts, my shorts, my um, my socks, my underwear, all uh, all in here. That's pretty much all that's in there, I think. Um, and then over here, in the side hatch. We have, this is my backup bag. This is also packed with, uh, with clothing. Um, and sometimes I keep like seasonal stuff in here. I put like, I have long pants in here in case it gets cold. Not expecting that for Florida, but you can have a chilly night in Florida. So I may be breaking out into there also. Lots of t-shirts. Yeah, I have a, uh, a near addiction to t-shirts. 
Um, I tend to wear my favorite ones over and over again, but I have so many. I was sorting through because before I cleaned out the car, this was getting a pile. There was clothes piled on top of here. There was clothes piled down in there. And I'm like, okay, I need to, need to, to, to minimize how many clothes are in my car. So I divided up my t-shirts. Um, so I have all my favorites in here and in the main bag. And then I have another suitcase about this size, just full of t-shirts. I've got two dressers full of t-shirts and I've got a, um, a big tote in the basement full of t-shirts. I try to, um, you know, I, I love collecting t-shirts. I'm a sucker for t-shirts. I love souvenirs. And to me, like t-shirts are like this souvenir that you can really use because it's like a practical souvenir because you always need shirts. Um, but man, I, sometimes I lose count. Sometimes I forget just how many shirts I have. And I also, you know, when I gained weight, I was up to a three X shirt. So I couldn't wear a lot of, a lot of shirts that I had before. So I started stocking up on three X shirts that I could wear. Then I lost a little bit of weight, was able to go back to two X. So all those shirts were resurrected. And then I got really excited again because when I was wearing three X, it was harder to buy shirts, harder to find shirts that fit. So, um, I started buying more two X's cause there was all these, all these times I had to pass up souvenir shirts cause there were two X's, not three X's. So now when I see a two X, I like, I grab it. Just got to keep the weight down so I could remain in these two X's. Otherwise I'm going to have a lot of shirts, <laughs> a lot of shirts that, uh, that I cannot wear today. We are wearing the old mill shirt from the Kansas state fair, the seasonal dark ride that they have there. That is actually super terrifying it's a old let me see does it have the date on here yeah 1915 a dark ride from 1915 we're in a boat that floats on actual water so yeah i always love uh most of my shirts are either shirts from attractions or uh or cryptid based shirts i'll i'll uh you know rotate in the cryptids most of them are either places i've been or cryptids that i'm interested in and um it's getting it's getting out of control um i try to I try to put a, uh, give my process of picking out a t-shirt here. I try to, when, when I picked the t-shirts to go in here and there, I tried to pick a variety of colors. I try not to wear the same color two days in a row. I try, um, so I, got, I, I end up getting a lot of black shirts. A lot of shirts are black. Um, and I, and, and I, I so, so sometimes I have to, to, to cycle out some of the black shirts cause I don't want to wear black all the time. Um, but you know, I like to wear the, the different bright colors. I, you know, I love the red shirts. They're kind of my trademark carpet bagger colors, the red shirt. I don't want to wear a red shirt every day. So I put in some blues, some greens, some other colors. I think I have a purple, the purple, uh, hometown of Popeye shirt that is currently, uh, in rotation. But, uh, yeah, I, um, I'm obsessed with shirts, I guess. And then down in this crevasse here, we have extra Crocs. There's some more shoved back in there, but I like to keep a few fresh pairs with me. Um, I go through a pair of Crocs approximately, approximately once, uh, once a month. I wear the men's 11s, so I keep these on hand um, so I can always pop a new pair on or if a pair tears or rips, then I have a backup waiting for me. I got this one. I think I've got some red and orange ones. Yeah, red and orange ones back in there. And then on the rare occasion that I do need an actual shoe, I've got my uh, my Skechers right there. And then I got my fur-lined Crocs. If it's uh, super, if it is super uh, super cold, um, I have my extra CPAP stuff back in there. And uh, yeah, so we got the primary suitcase, the backup suitcase, this uh, backpack here is where my computer is and any other photo equipment that I need uh, to have with me. I have my CPAP there. It helps me breathe at night. And um, yeah, this is kind of a pain. This is a one with pain about traveling and you're getting older and having health issues. Um, you have to have this to, um, you know, I have to break this down every night, clear it, clean it out, repack it unpack it so yeah sometimes i go weeks at a time without sleeping in the same bed more than one night so sometimes that gets to be a pain luckily um the hotel i got booked i got for seven days right now in florida so uh at least we will set that up for about seven days 
This is extra bathroom stuff. Um, yeah, my uh, my I have my shave. I think I have my shaving bag up there in the front seat. But this is all extra stuff: razors, shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrush. So if I run out, I have uh, have backups there. This one's got all my prescription meds in it for uh, for refills. Let's see what we got there: the umbrella, the uh, tripod that I never use. <laughs> A nice professional tripod to set up end up never ever using it i don't even know why i have it in the car maybe i should start using it but yeah the umbrella in there in case it gets a little soggy and in this hatch here we have the car kitchen i uh, got the cooler there the cooler's not full right now it's empty um, i got a hose attached to it back there so i can empty out the water um, without having to ever move this so uh, yeah, try to keep snacks stocked in there. Although um, I've been having a hard time doing that uh, the last um, the last few months. But uh, yeah, I got everything you need in the car kitchen: disposable silverware, mayonnaise, tuna. I think I got some spam in here. I love these spam singles, and um, these are always a lifesaver here because I do try to eat low carb. So um, I have these zero. Uh, zero carb tortillas. I have two different brands back here. No, that's the same brand. The La Banderita Carb Counter Zero Net Carbs. So a lot of times, this is I'll stop at a fast food restaurant, take off the bun or tortilla, and fill it in here. And that way, I can avoid um, avoid all the carbs. Uh, we may probably need to stop and uh, fill up the the cooler at some point. It's always just good to have stuff that you can eat, so you can snack on, um, that is more healthy. That way, it's not tempting to uh, keep stopping at um, at fast food places. And then this crevasse here, this is full of d jackets, hoodies of different sizes and weights that I can switch out depending on uh, the weather. Yeah, up here in the front, I have my shaving bag. This is actually a a uh, present from Anna. So I like to have that around. And, and this is like a bag of like drinks and snacks. So I can grab this and take it into the hotel with me. So just have, you know, so I just have everything in there. So I can take it in and out of the hotels. Um, these are my go-to snacks when I try to eat. You know, again, try to, try to stay low carb. So I'll eat these um, these Atkins bars. I like them. I think they're pretty good. I think they they, they satiate any sort of sweet cravings. I'm not the biggest sweet person, but every, every once in a while you want something sweet. So kind of this is the go-to for that. I don't want to show. I don't want to show the the my name or information on this. But oh, I do. Uh, I do take Ozempic for my uh, for my diabetes. And um, so that's one of the reasons, another reason I got to have the car cooler because um, you got to, you know, you, you got to keep ice on there because this has, this can't be, um, this Ozempic can't be, it can't be uh, left out in the heat. So if it, if it temperature raises on this, it goes, it goes bad. So if I'm traveling, especially if I'm doing like traveling where, uh, my car is out in the sun during the day. I have to make sure that's full of ice so that um, I can keep that cool. That's one of the main reasons I have the... Well, there's actually two main reasons for the car cooler. One I've already explained. And to keep my um, my Ozempic uh, usable. The Ozempic's done, it's done well for me. Um, again, I, I take it because I, uh, I am diabetic. Um, I've lost... I've lost and gained weight. I think I'm about 25 pounds down from my original weight. I think I can lose more um, if I uh, if I put my mind to it. Haunt season is always the hardest time uh, for me to to eat well for uh, for a variety of reasons. Just the the hours, the um, you know, you getting out of the haunt late at night and then not, not having any food. And of course, you know, I could always be more well prepared, but um, also you know, we're traveling through um, New England. I just really wanted to allow myself to have um, that seafood because it's some of my favorite food. 
And, you know, I like to be able to sample. It's part of the videos, you know, part of the videos to show food. Obviously, that could be used as an excuse. And I try not to use it as an excuse. So, and this sounds like an excuse when I say it, but it's it's just what it is. Um, so definitely, I try to, I'm more likely to indulge when I'm doing videos because I want to show the food, want to try the food as part of the experience in making the video. So I do try to reserve like the super bad meals for video. If I'm not going to show it, then I try to eat healthier, try to eat less carbs. So ideally, the idea is that in the videos, I can eat the food and show you guys. But when I'm not filming, then I have uh, the healthier stuff in the um, in the cooler that I can eat. So, you know, it's it's better than just eating garbage all the time, which is what I did for years. That's what I did. I almost uh, almost got really bad, honestly. Um, I went two years without going to the doctor. And by the time I went back to the doctor, everything had fallen apart. My diabetes had um, spiraled out of control. I had um, sleep apnea. Um, I mean, I, 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 I was diagnosed, diagnosed with, uh, I'd already diagnosed with diabetes, but, um, two years ago I was completely under control with medicine. Didn't go to the doctor for two years and I spiraled out of control. Take care of yourself. Go to your doctor's appointments. It's very important. Um, and then I had, um, I had sleep, developed sleep apnea and, um, I had damage to my lungs. Um, you know, I do not smoke or anything like that, but my lungs, were not great. Um, I had like high blood pressure in my lungs. I noticed it. I was at the Grand Canyon and I was walking, but I wasn't walking on a trail. I wasn't walking uphill. I was walking on a hundred percent flat ground around the mouth of the Canyon. And I was so out of breath. I could hardly walk. I could hardly put one foot in front of the other. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm healthy. I don't know if I'm healthy. So you know, that's a, that when I started going back to the doctor after two years, um, a lot of stuff, you know, ran my blood work. It was just a bunch of garbage. It was not good. And uh, my doctor, you know, put me on different medications right now. I'm in pretty good shape. Um, my blood sugar is that of a normal person's my, um, my sleep apnea is under control. I'm sleeping. I'm not ex exhausted all the time. Um, so those are two big pluses. All my numbers are pretty much where they need to be. I, I I would like to lose a little more weight, not because I'm worried about how I look, but just because <clears throat> just because I want to be more comfortable. I do a lot of traveling. I do a lot of, you know, I ride amusement park rides and things like that. And I just like my body to be a little bit more manageable and uh, and just feel better in my own body is kind of what, what I would like. So um, working on that. Um, we're in a little bit of a down period right now. I've not fallen off the wagon. Um, I do generally try to eat low carb, um, still just, um, made a lot of exceptions in New England and made a lot of exceptions just during haunt season in general, where it was so much easier to just, um, grab a hot dog or something at the, at the haunt rather than, uh, go out and seek something healthy. And you got to switch it. That's one thing with the, with the car cooler, you really got to switch it up. You got to put different things in there. I know a lot of times I find something I like, and then I eat it over and over and over and over. And I begin to become sick of it. And then you don't want to eat out of the cooler. So you got to kind of keep the cooler rotated to, uh, to where it's stuff that, uh, that you like stuff that you, you want to eat. And um, that just keeps you eating out of the cooler. And, and once you get sick of it, then 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 you start to your mind starts to wander that to uh, to other stuff. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna fill a cooler up here in um, here in Waynesville or if I'm gonna wait somewhere uh, else along the way or fill it up once I get uh, to Florida. Because actually, I'll be honest with you guys, I've not been doing a good job the last week with, um, with, uh, low carb. Um, and the reason that this is, well, I'm going to show you the reason.
So we talked about my addiction to t-shirts, but I think this, this here may be my true addiction. I'm addicted to Maxi Melts. So I did the video showing the retro Taco Bell menu. They brought back my favorite fast food menu item of all time, the Beef Maxi Melt. And at least once a day since I've uploaded that video, I have had a meal comprised entirely of Maxi Melt. Some days I've had more than one meal comprised entirely of Maxi Melts. And yes, the, the first ones I got were made incorrectly using the Gordita wrap. Every other one I've gotten has been made properly. Oh my goodness. The thing, the thing is, you know, I love these so much. My, again, my favorite fast food item of all time. Something about the pico de gallo, the cilantro in there. Makes it super good. Well, these aren't cheap. So $3 for these tiny little tacos. So you get, a, you get a few of them. It adds up, but I'm just trying to enjoy them while they're here. And I think that's the scary thing about all this is that they're on a, they're a limited time item. So these could go away. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, they will make the decision to keep the pico de gallo on the menu. And at least then they'll have the ingredients to make it. There was a brief time where the, the Mexican melt was not on the menu, but they'd still make it for you because they had all the ingredients. And you could ask for Mexican melt. They'd ring it up. It didn't appear on the, the menu, but it was on like the secret menu. And um, I'm just trying to eat as many as I can while I can. I don't know when it's going to go away. This is the same process I go through when McDonald's brings back the McRib. I literally try to make myself sick of the item so I can cope better when it goes away. But I don't know. I feel like I could eat an infinite, an infinite amount of Mexi Melt. And um, I could never get sick of them. So, I'm probably going to need to fill up the cooler to prevent myself from living entirely on Maxi Melts. But again, you know, we got to enjoy them while we can. Oh, there is one thing I wanted to show you guys that I had forgotten to show you here in my uh, computer bag. I have a new camera. The uh, This is the... DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro. Now, uh, my friend Carolina Tony had the Action uh, Action 4 he showed me at the Chili Cook-Off. And I, I had the original Osmo Action, so I figured... It was basically Osmo Action 1. So I figured it was time to upgrade. One thing I like about this is on my uh, original Osmo, there's a button that switches back and forth between the front and back screen and you cannot do it while it's recording this actually shows the front and back so when I'm on a roller coaster I can actually spin this so I can look front and I can spin it back towards me and I can see myself in the selfie mode um, in that window so I, I don't have to you know either film blindly or pick which uh, which way it faces. So I think that'll help me film some better roller coaster videos. And this should be better quality. I, you know, being a five instead of a one, um, Carolina Tony said his, uh, gave some great footage. Oh, and it also has a night mode on it. So that could be good for filming rides, um, either in the dark or when I'm riding roller coasters at, it, it, during the evening. But if anyone's familiar with this camera or has any tips for me, leave a comment in uh, in the comment section. I, you know, I usually wear these, especially when I'm on rides, usually wear these on the hand instead of the chest. 
um, the hand just gives me way more control over wh what and how I'm filming, and I can show myself um, writing, and, the, the, and, and then you know switch to POV if I have it um, on my wrist. So, be fun uh, to try this out because we're going to Florida, where all there's a bunch of theme parks. So, uh, the theme parks that allow this, I will uh, I will try it out. get a lot of questions about is my driving, my driving habits, how do I stand being in the car so much, um, what do I do to entertain myself while I am in the car, and yeah, I do drive a lot, like that is a fact. Um, on days when I'm just trying to make a lot of distance, you know, maybe I'm not necessarily filming, but I just want to get somewhere, I can drive probably up to 12, 13, 14 hours. Um, in one go round, um, a lot of times if I am filming, um, like you know when I was traveling out west earlier in the year, I would film something during the day, um, you know, and then try to be at least on the road by five o'clock or so, and then still drive five six hours in a night, get into the hotel room, edit. Um, usually I try to get to bed around two a.m. That way, you know, check out at a hotel's 11, so if, I, if I'm in bed by 2, um, if I wake up at, if I get 8 hours of sleep, I wake up at 10, so I time to get ready, get my stuff, and be out of the hotel by 11, be back on the road, uh, film something that day, and then wash, rinse, repeat. So, yeah, it is, um, it is, it is a lot of time in the car, and, oh, we're actually crossing the South Carolina border, as I am, uh, as I'm speaking. So on our way to uh, to Florida. But yeah, when um, you know when I get in the car, um, you know it, it can be it can be boring to be in a car. Um, you know, but I, I, over years, over doing it so much, I become kind of immune to it, where it does not bother me um, like it used to. And I'm kind of just just okay with with being in the car for a long period. That's almost almost like downtime in in, in some ways. Not completely. You have to pay attention to the road. You have to drive. But um, you know, it's not. I'm not running around. I'm not stressing out because I got to film this. I'm running around in an amusement park trying to film. Um, I'm just in the seat, just driving forward, and uh, so it gives me a little bit, just to, at least my mind. A little bit of a rest, you know, not you know, not as in my body because you know driving can be make you sore. Um, one reason I showed, you know, I have the Chevy Equinox. My old car that Jen drives is a Chevy Equinox, and one reason I got it was because um, the seats were just really comfortable. That's one of the things I liked about it to begin with. And why I've stuck with them is uh, it just gives me some back support. Um, some of the cars I had before I got the Equinox were very uncomfortable. My back would hurt after long trips on uh, on the road. So um, it was good to have a uh, good to have that um, support, that lumbar support on my back. And actually, we're pulling up on the South Carolina Welcome Center. You know, I love checking out the Welcome Centers. So uh, let's pull in here. The, the rest areas in North Carolina were still closed uh, because of the hurricane. But I like to compare the different welcome centers. I don't think we're going to get to Florida Welcome Center in time to get some, any orange juice today. Let's see what the South Carolina Welcome Center has uh, to offer. And it does have the big welcome sign to get your selfies with. To me, this is an important thing at a welcome center. You want to have that photo op that you can take if you're going on a road trip. You could take pictures with the welcome sign. When me and Jen were in New England, some of the welcome centers did not have the welcome signs, which I thought was very, very disappointing. You can't get your uh, your uh, state selfie with uh, with the sign. Um, I like, you know, I love South Carolina's flag, that uh, moon over the palmetto tree. So very nice. They have the the good welcome sign here, and it's huge. Yeah, you got to do your. 
state selfie. Oh, gotta get the whole word in there. Yay, we made it to South Carolina. Now let's take a peek inside and see what South Carolina has for out-of-state visitors entering their state. How are they gonna sell their state to, uh, to travelers? Well, they do have free Wi-Fi. That's a good start. So a pretty simple setup in here. The lady was very helpful, asking me questions about where I was going. And then we just got a lot of uh, brochures. And you know these brochures are very helpful when looking. I do always check the brochure racks, looking for something that may have slipped between the cracks that I haven't seen before. This museum of York County is one of the best um, local museums. Like, just like a county museum, it's absolutely amazing. They have a lot of taxidermy. They've got some great Ice Age scenes. It's just really probably one of my favorite, like, local small town museums. It is, it is great. And different uh, museums here, the Steeplechase Museum. And, uh, oh, of course, one of my favorite attractions in South Carolina, south of the border. I've not heard of this, the Boykin Spaniel Invasion. Says there are statues of uh, Boykin Spaniels, which is a type of dog, spread around town. you got to try to find them all. South Carolina Tobacco Museum. I've not been to this one. I've been to the Tobacco Museum in North Carolina. It has a really cool animatronic uh, tobacco farmer. The War Between the States Museum. Yeah, the War Between the States is what some people in the South refer to uh, the Civil War as. Got a lot of different EMs museums to uh, stop and see. There's Poppington's Gourmet Popcorn. I love their mascot as a piece of popcorn with a top hat and a mustache. Oh, and look at this. There are a brochure for the Peachoy, the giant peach water tower in Gaffney, South Carolina. Oh, it's just the story, the story of the Peachoid in there. Walking tours of the Peachoid. I do love, I, always, I, I never realized, that, I've always called it the Peachoid, but I didn't realize that that was like the official, <laughs> the official name. Here is the Myrtle Beach section. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff in Myrtle Beach. Lots of fun to be had. I've been to this Kazoo Museum before, but it actually looks like they've remodeled. I may need to come back to the uh, Kazoo Museum at some point. I know they, uh, they let you make your own kazoo to take home. And I would rate the South Carolina Welcome Center here on I-26, the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. I would put this kind of a medium-ranged Welcome Center. There was nothing flashy. They didn't give any free samples. There wasn't a lot of photo ops, but the staff very helpful and uh, a lot of information, a lot of brochures, just, just not too flashy. Before we stopped to the Welcome Center, we were talking about spending long periods of time in the car and I feel like I kind of got um, I built up a tolerance as a very young person with spending a lot of time in the car because I spent a lot of time or at least what I felt was a lot of time in the car when I was a kid my uh, my father lived in Milwaukee Wisconsin my mother lived in Valparaiso Indiana which are about three to four hours apart depending on the traffic in Chicago. And so my dad would come pick me up and uh, take me to his house. Um, usually went there on uh, you know long weekends, and holidays, and summertime. My dad would come pick me up and take me uh, to uh, his home in the Milwaukee area. And at the time, man, it was hard. It was hard as a kid in the 80s, just sitting there in the car. Of course, me and my dad would chat, you know, it was always fun to, to catch up with my dad, but, you know, eventually there'd be a time where I'd just be sick of being in the car, I'd be like, when are we there? Are we there yet? Are we there? I literally asked him all the time if we were there yet, and, you know, I would say like, yep, we're here, look out the window, you see my house, 
<laughs> and, um, but yeah, I could not, I just, I got bored. One thing I remembered that back then, like, to pass the time, you know, cause keep in mind, you know, now when your kid's in the car and your kid's bored, you give them a tablet, give them a TV, give them a DVD player, give them a cell phone and they can keep themselves entertained for hours. You know, this is the 1980s. We, uh, we couldn't do that. I would sometimes bring a book, but actually uh, reading the book in the car would make me car sick, so I pretty much couldn't do that. Um, in order to not get car sick, I would have to look out the window and you know concentrate on the window. And I just remember driving as a kid, you know, having to look out the window, not having anything to distract myself with. Kind of what you what I would do is like you'd look for landmarks, a familiar landmark. So I remember different landmarks driving you know, driving in between that area, between Milwaukee and Northern Indiana, you look out for the um, the oases over the st over the highway that have like restaurants, gas stations that actually went over top the uh, the road, and they're almost all gone now. There's just a few of them left. I remember like waiting for like different water towers that I remember. Like, remember there's a water tower that said All Sip that I always waited for. So kind of just built up my tolerance for being stuck in the car as a, as a kid. Like I said, it was three or four hours. For me, a three, hour, four, a three or four hour drive hardly even registers anymore. I uh, literally, you know, have driven three hours to do something and then driven back that evening while filming on this channel. Um, you know, it's not, again, it's not unusual for me to drive five or six hours a day for an extended period of time. And of course, you know, it's different. When you're driving, you have to pay more attention. When you're a kid, you can daydream, you can try to take a nap. And that's another thing, I could never nap in the car as a kid. I wasn't good at making myself fall asleep. Um, but, you know, so you know, you end up listening to music, to uh, podcasts, a lot of people always ask me what I listen to. And I listen to music and I have a wide, uh, a wide variety of music, my taste in music is not very focused. Generally, it's just stuff that I've heard that I like. Um, if I like hear a song somewhere, I will um, add it to a playlist, just throw it up there. Um, and yeah, it's just because people ask you what kind of what kind of music you like, and I never, um, I never never have like a good answer for that. Um, Jen makes fun of my taste in music. She, she defined, what did she, one time, I think she was joking, but she uh, re referred to my type of music as Lilith Fair type music. Um, I do like, um, there's a folk singer, Josh Ritter, that has always been, my car tells me, my car tells me to, 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 to keep steering, the car thinks I'm not steering, but for some reason, I am steering, I'm just not making a lot of turns. Like if I'm just holding the car straight, because we're going straight, sometimes the car will be like, hey, steer, so I gotta give it a few of these to let the car know that I am, uh, that I am steering. But yeah, as a folk singer, Josh Ritter, um, who I've always liked since I first heard him, been listening to him for over 10 years. Um, I'm a big fan of a group, the, the Drive-By Truckers, one of my favorites. Um, one of my favorite just bands. Uh, they are like a, it, it, it's a southern music. It's a lot of their music plays like tribute to the South and Southern culture, which I was always very interested in moving to the South, learning about Southern culture. So that was one way I learned about Southern culture was by listening to the uh, to the drive by truckers. I've thought about putting like a playlist out somewhere. I don't know if people do that anymore, like, if I'd like to share a Spotify playlist or something, I don't even know. I don't even know how to do how to share that. But um, I know uh, maybe just to show you know some of the things I listen to on the road that I could share with you guys. You guys could like get a playlist. If someone knows the best way to do that, I would be happy to to throw a playlist up of music I do listen to while driving. Because you know I, I mentioned a few of my favorites, but it's it's very all over the place. Like I said, I, I'll just hear a song I like and I'll cycle it in to uh, to my um, to my playlist um, I do listen to podcasts um, I listen to a lot of 
uh, a lot of wrestling podcasts. I, I do love. I'm a big wrestling fan. My favorite wrestling podcast is um, it's called the Solomonster Sounds Off. Been listening to it for gosh, probably probably close to like ten years now. Um, that's one of my absolute favorites uh, as far as wrestling podcasts. If anyone likes wrestling, I would definitely recommend that. I think it's a great. The host is like has this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling. Uh, it's really great. And um, I listened to uh, last podcast on the left. They cover like true crime and cryptids and UFOs. Um, and it's really fun. It's a comedy podcast. It's a little little on the rougher end. There's a lot of swearing, a lot of dark humor, a lot of inappropriate humor. But uh, but it's still it's still a good listen to. Um, and I like and I like things with like you know quirky takes on history. Um, the uh, Dollop is a podcast where they um, they will review like um, go back. One guy reads uh, a story about a weird you know weird history to his friend who doesn't know anything about history, so they kind of play off each other. And there's a lot of really quirky his- historical things in there. A lot, of, and I love those. Like I love history, but especially I love like history, like the strange, weird, just you know, folk characters of history, so a lot of that, uh, there's stuff, stuff you should know, which is kind of in the same, uh, the same vein, um, they just talk about random things that, like, you know, the, you know, the stuff that you, like, the title stuff you should know, and that's kind of what it is, just, like, facts about stuff that maybe you didn't have a particular interest in, but it wanted to kind of learn the basics of, and they do some of the strange history as well, and one time they mentioned my channel out of the blue. It was so weird. They mentioned my channel um, as part of the research. They did a um, they did a podcast about uh, Moldoramas and Moldomatics, and they actually uh, referenced a video. And it was actually not a video. It was one of the few videos of my channel where I'm not actually in the video. It was when Anna was little. Um, she was going through our Moldorama collection and they uh, they thought she was really cute and uh, had stumbled upon that as they are uh, as they were doing the the, the research on on Moldoramas, which is really cool like that's really cool to have um, a podcast you listen to and then suddenly they're talking about um, my channel and, and stuff on my channel I was that that was a really really cool experience and then I do um, obviously I can't watch YouTube channels. But sometimes I will put YouTube channels on, you know, and like you know, turn the sc- turn the screen off and just listen to listen to them. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that's more long form. Again, like stuff about cryptids, stuff about weird history, uh, stuff like that. Um, I don't just in general like consuming YouTube. I don't consume a lot of other vlogs. Um, sometimes I'll check in. You know, people I know, friends that have vlogs. I will check in to see what they're up to. But for the most part, um, it's just, you know, what I do is vlogging. I vlog all day, every day, most days. So it's kind of a nice to get a, get a break from that format. Sometimes I like to see what other people are covering. And sometimes I get curious about, like, how other people do things. And maybe if I could do things a little better. But for the most part, there isn't any vlogs that I consume on, like, a daily or regular basis. And then, you know, in a car, you, you know, when you're just listening, the, that kind of takes away from the vlog. Because a lot of vlog, vlogging is showing. Um, so usually with the stuff I listen to on YouTube in the car is stuff that's more like a podcast or, or, uh, or uh, you know, video, essay, video essays that, <clears throat> that you're not required to see the... Uh, the, uh, the, um, the visuals... Just thinking about YouTube, like some of my favorite YouTube channels. Like again, I'm not I'm big into into watching other vlogs all the time. Um, I really like um, some of my favorite channels are uh, like Defunct Land. I think is a great channel as far as like weird theme park and attraction history. Um, Expedition Theme Park is amazing. Does a really good job talking about the history of theme parks. And um, you talk about wrestling. As far as YouTube channels on wrestling, I like um, Wrestling with Regret is one of my favorite uh, YouTube channels. One of my favorite channels all together. Real creative spin on uh, on covering wrestling. So yeah, those are some of the things 
some of the things that, that, that entertain me while I'm driving. And you know, sometimes you just gotta enjoy the entertainment outside the windshield. You just gotta see the world, you know, driving through different places, different environments that you're not used to driving through is, uh, is a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, spent a lot of time in the car, a lot of time in the car. <laughs> And uh, you know, sometimes you get ideas and stuff in the car and uh, you know, you have to try to keep those in your head until you're a place where you can write them down. Or, so yeah, you do a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking, planning in the car as well in between. Cause sometimes, sometimes it's my only time actually down. By the time I get to the hotel, I'm already exhausted. So I gotta get edited and then take a shower um, and get ready, get ready for the next day already. So I don't know. My, this is how I do things. I don't know if it's necessarily the best way to do things. I do think it would probably be smarter if I stuck around one area a little longer, but I don't know. I'm always on the move because there's like, oh, I got to get to this event on this date, and then I got to get here before the fair ends, and, uh, and then, you know, I do want to get home at some point, so I'm like rushing myself. So I think ideally it would probably, my channel would probably <laughs> be in a better position if I would just slow down a little bit, but I don't know. I'm anxious. I'm anxious and I want to get out there and see everything. <laughs> oh, so much time in the car. Now, sadly, both the Georgia and Florida Welcome Centers were closed. They close at 5, so do not get to experience them today. And they're both good ones. Florida gives you your, your free orange juice. The Georgia one is very, very beautiful. has a lot of cool photo ops. But uh, we do have Bucky's here to greet us to Florida. This is the Bucky's in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, usually when I am traveling to Florida, when I'm doing the whole drive from my house to Florida, usually this is where I grab some dinner at uh, at Bucky's. And uh, also, I haven't seen their Christmas stuff yet. Uh, so let's head inside and uh, see what's going on at Bucky's. And here's that Bucky Christmas merch. I do like the uh, Bucky wearing the uh, Santa hat on the front of the shirt. This is the back of the shirts there. It's uh, it's uh, Bucky as a Nutcracker by the Christmas tree. And they have plush Santa Bucky for Christmas. Uh, Jen is collecting all the different seasons of Bucky. Um, she already has a Santa Claus. So hoping they would do something a little different, but I guess uh, you gotta have Santa Bucky for Christmas. I think this is new as well, this uh, Bucky's Beaver shirt, kind of a football theme shirt. And you got the little Bucky's footballs to go with it. Now Jen was telling me that she wanted one of these. These are the uh, Bucky Nutcrackers. And you know, I saw it for a second. I thought this was non-functional. I refuse to buy non-functional Nutcrackers. But he does have a little mouth there in his neck. So I guess technically that counts as a Nutcracker. Although I think it'd be much more fun if they utilized his real mouth. They have Bucky in his iconic truck dressed as Santa here. Just like a snow globe. Can we turn that on? Oh, there we go. Turn it on. Oh, look at that. It's like a self-shaking snow globe. It plays music. And, uh, and it causes the little sparkles in there. A little sparkly snow to dance. They also have a section dedicated to non-beaver related Christmas items. Okay, here's that iconic Bucky's truck that uh, you see in the snow globe. Back always full of lots and lots of smiling beavers. And you can see on the front of the Bucky's truck, they have uh, Bucky's face painted. This Bucky's tree full of Bucky's themed ornaments. Got little stuffed Bucky's. It's like a Bucky sweater snow-filled ornament there, and then there's like a Bucky that pops out of the tree. But yeah, you can see his feet, his feet down here. There's an election-themed shirt that's a little outdated now. Bucky's 2024, a party we can all join. Back here we have our traditional Bucky's beaver suits, 
These are like beaver hoodies with they're like full body pajamas. They even have the little beaver tail right there. And here we have the Christmas version of the Bucky pajamas. You dress up like an elf, but not just any elf. It's a beaver elf. So you put that on over your over your head, and it is complete with the uh, the beaver tail there. And it is 2024, the year of the pressed penny. So we should get some Bucky's pressed pennies made. I don't know if I have these. I've gotten so many pressed pennies this year, I'm starting to lose track. But uh, yeah, let's get some Bucky's St. Augustine pennies here. Okay, quarter, quarter penny. And turn that crank. There we go, all four Florida Bucky's pennies from St. Augustine. And they all look very good. They're, they're pressed very well. We'll grab some barbecue for dinner um, at night. It's after 10 o'clock, so they do have a smaller selection overnight. We're open, they're open 24 hours, so they don't. I guess they don't want to make a ton of food here late at night, but I think we will get the Big Buckin' Brisket Sandwich. And it is only $1.19 for an extra large cup. I usually go with the Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar because it is Texas, or at least founded in Texas. We're not technically in Texas, although I think if you're in a Bucky's, you're technically on uh, Texas soil. Okay, so I did purchase the Bucky's Nutcracker, the Buckcracker, if you will, because Jen simply can't get enough of Bucky. Uh, I do got my uh, big Buckin, big Buckin brisket sandwich double XL there, and I do, you know, I do, I do try to stay low carb, so I do uh, switch the meat onto my uh, my zero carb tortilla there. So we'll get this unwrapped. The joys of having your car be your dining room. <laughs> All right, so we'll take off that top bun. Set that on the dashboard. And then fill up our tortilla there with some of that delicious barbecue. Da, 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 da. Get all that meat onto that tortilla. Fairly good mound of beef there. Let's get this other, other bun. There we go. So we got about that much meat to work with. That's a pretty large amount of meat. Um, they won't, you can buy the brisket by itself, but they make you buy it. You can't buy, I always want to buy like half a pound to use for, for a meal. They will, they only do it in increments of a pound. So you have to get a full pound of brisket and that's a little too much. It's, I hate, you know, I hate wasting the sandwich when I, I wish they would just sell me the half a pound of brisket, but sometimes Bucky's is funny about that sort of thing. There was a period of time, the darkest time in Bucky's history where they um, they actually would not sell you a cup of barbecue sauce. They made you, you had to buy a whole bottle of barbecue sauce. I ended up wasting whole bottles of barbecue sauce just so I could have enough to put on my sandwich. Fortunately, they rectified that situation. I feel like I was not the only one that was unhappy with that. You are now allowed a free cup of barbecue sauce with any barbecue item, and you can actually buy additional cups for like a dollar or something. So we add the extra barbecue sauce there. Cause I do really like, I do really like their, their barbecue sauce. All right. The traditional welcome to Florida, big pile of brisket. And I get, one thing I do like about Bucky's is that it is authentic Texas barbecue. If you're familiar with the different types of barbecue, you could definitely tell that this is uh, authentic Texas barbecue. Because Bucky's used to only be 
in Texas before it started spreading out, making its nationwide conquer, conquering of our nation. There we go. Hmm. Definitely the best barbecue you will ever get at a gas station. It's not my favorite place to get barbecue, but as far as getting getting Texas barbecue outside of uh, Texas, you can't do much better. Honestly, you know, if I was in Texas, I probably wouldn't eat the barbecue at Bucky's. I'd probably go somewhere else. But if I'm outside of Texas and I want Texas barbecue, this will pretty much scratch your itch. So just checked into my hotel room. Very happy. Well, a very, very spacious hotel room. Got a very good deal on this. Uh, particular hotel room. The only downside is apparently there's no water until tomorrow morning. They have the, they're, they're doing maintenance on the water system. So for this evening, they've, uh, they've turned off the water, but they were nice enough to leave jugs of water so I can flush the toilet. They gave me this five quart bucket. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. That's beside the point, because all I gotta do is edit this video and then I have to get some sleep. Um, the plans for this week are to, um, of course, we came down here for IAPA, the theme park trade show that they have every year. I wanna spend two days at IAPA. Every year I've been doing one day at IAPA, and last year I didn't even get to see everything because I just ran out of time. So it's really. Such a large event. I've decided that this day I'm going to de this year I'm going to dedicate two days to covering the IAPA convention. But that is not until next week. In the meantime, you know, since we're here on theme park business, I figure we will indulge in the theme parks of Central Florida. I want to try to do pretty much all the theme parks while I'm here. Of course, Disney, Universal, Busch Gardens, Sea World. Is there anything else you guys would like to see me try to make sure I visit while I'm here in the Central Florida region? Leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for keeping me company today on the road. I do I do appreciate you guys coming along with me. I'm gonna get some sleep and we're gonna hit the hit the ground running with our uh, Central Florida trip here. Uh, I wanna thank you guys so much for coming along on this adventure. If you like these videos please subscribe i travel around the country i film roadside attractions amusement parks museums haunted houses and other fun random stuff if you'd like to help out the channel um consider contributing to patreon three dollars or more we'll get you a postcard once a month also have the etsy shop with such things as enamel pins press pennies and stickers and actually very soon here i'm going to put a new item in the Etsy shop. I was actually going to do it today, but I forgot. So hopefully I'll get that up soon. Um, also doing personalized messages on Cameo if you're interested in that. Check the description for, in for information on all those things. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.